Okay, so this might be a hard one. I dropped a video yesterday about all the lost episodes in the original Gundam series, and afterwards a Nord detective by the name of Analog Mine asked me, Hey MB, I'm interested in getting into the classic Gundam series, so which one should I start with? The ones from the 80s or 90s? But I like Lupin, so I like 70s anime. Anyway, yeah, what should I start with? Okay, well, this is the first time I've ever been asked this, and I guess I'm just going to go over how I got into Gundam, and where I think some of the good places to start with it are. And this is a really fun question to put to me because I am one of those people who's watched every single episode of Gundam ever made from the 1970s till today. So let me start with a loose recap of how the series came to America because back in the 90s it was really hard to get a hold of Gundam in the right order. And I'm also going to preface with this that I am mostly an American. I currently live in America, but I also spent several years of my childhood living in Japan so uh, that gave me a slight advantage over most people. But anyway, like most Americans, my first exposure with Gundam was Gundam and Gantunami, and I think this still holds up as the most accessible Gundam series because it just kind of stands alone by itself. And also, Wing has a few insane nuances that I would say make it one of the most coolly philosophical Gundam series. So if you're like really into philosophy, this one might be up your alley. Also, a lot of Gundams get so deep into philosophy that their dialogue ends up sounding very eclectic. And Wing is, like, exceptional in this case because it sounds almost Shakespearean with the dub. Like, it has, like, a very weird conversational style and it really relishes in this. Anyway, uh, overall, Wing is a good Gundam series, but it's not the most original Gundam series. I still like Wing for the characters, and to this day, I think the Wing Gundams are among the coolest Gundams ever designed. After that, because I was still living in Florida watching Gundam on Toonami, the next Gundam series I was exposed to was OAFMS Team and then 0080. And I want to say both of these series hold up exceptionally well, just as really good standalone series. Like, you can definitely appreciate OAFMS Team more when you know about the greater timeline, but it also works as its own thing. And 0080 is just a tragedy and it just works as this like standalone tragic movie. After that, the next Gundam series I think I watched on Toonami was 0083. Now, I really enjoyed 0083 at the time, but as an adult, I realized that 0083 is a lot better if you've seen it after Zeta, because it's set up to be a prequel to Zeta. It's also a little bit better if you've also seen Top Gun, or maybe it's worse if you've seen Top Gun. Long story short, after I watched Top Gun, I realized that 0083 stole a lot from Top Gun. Now... After this, if I remember the timeline right, I think after this, the original Gundam finally was released in English dub on Toonami. And everyone was like, what the fuck is this shit? It's from the 70s, it's got no color, and so it bombed out. Now, if I remember correctly, when I was watching the original Gundam on Toonami, I think it was cancelled and formally kicked off the air just around the time they reached the Black Tri Stories, which is like the middle of the series, when it starts to get really serious. Anyway, so let's open up a can of worms now and talk about the 70s Gundam and what's the best way to watch it because that was the question I was actually asked. And I want you guys to know that the original 70s Gundam is a super mess. Now, I happen to like anime from the 70s. I've seen your Mazingers, I've seen your Zambots, I've seen a bunch of random 70s anime. But the original Gundam, like, stands out from the pack because it's got some bizarre pacing. Amro's kind of annoying, like, wuss protagonist, and there are some dumb episodes about the white base trying to defuse time bombs of running out of salt and silly things like that. Now, I'm going to say if you just want to watch the original Gundam for the sake of watching it, go right ahead. But here's what I think the best personal recipe for watching the original Gundam is now. So, after the original Gundam aired and was cancelled in Japan in 1979, uh, a year passed, it was 1980. And in 1980, the original Gundam went into reruns and started airing all over the TV in Japan. Now, surprisingly, the reruns of Gundam did much better than the original run. And then, out of curiosity, Bandai decided to release the soundtrack for the show, and the soundtrack sold like hotcakes super, super well. So after that, finally in 1981, they re-released the series as the three compilation movies. Now, I would say the compilation movies are the perfect and best way to watch the original Gundam, but even then, the compilation movies are 100% perfect. So just breaking them each down into their own thing. We first get the first movie, and the first movie is not my favorite one. It's honestly the worst one. The first movie is just a re-edit of the first 20 episodes of the series. And I'd say it covers a lot of subplots, 
and it kind of breaks down the first 20 episodes into a series of events. Amuro stealing the Gundam, the first time meeting Char, the first time the white base goes to Earth, Char betraying Garma, who Garma is, then Amuro freaking out on his mom, his mom disowning him, and finally the movie ends with the introduction of Ron Burrell, but Ron Burrell doesn't actually do anything in this movie. I have really, really mixed feelings on Gundam Movie 1 because, for starters, it's two and a half hours long, and it kind of sucks. Like, if you guys like movies, this isn't a normal movie. It doesn't flow like a normal movie. It doesn't have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and that's because it's literally just a bunch of TV episodes chopped up and played in like a, like a marathon format. Now, I will say the first ending does have a decent ass ending with Amuro watching Garen on TV and being like, oh fuck, the Xeon are fascist, but otherwise the movie is like a total mess. Like, I'd honestly say if you want the best version of the same events, I would say just watch a couple of episodes of the 79 anime, like the first one, the first one they fight Char, the one where Amuro meets his mom, the one where Garma dies. Like, as much as I like the movies, the first movie is entirely skippable. Like, if you don't even want to watch the first movie or the TV series, you can actually get into Gundam by starting on the second movie. Gundam Movie 2, Soldiers of Sorrow, because that movie actually starts off with a 10 minute recap of all these events, and that movie is very entertaining. Now before I get into that movie, I'm also going to pivot a sec and bring up the more recent Gundam movie, The Island of Kakarus Dome, which actually only came out last year. Now even though this movie has modern CGI and OFMS team inspired combat, I'd say this movie was fundamentally created to reintroduce 70s Gundam to a modern audience and also potentially like stew the waters for a reboot of it. But I gotta say for most people, I think if you want to get into Gundam, this is not a bad place to start. Because the only real information missing in this movie is that Ryu Jose is randomly swapped with Slager for really no reason. And if you watch Gundam Movie 2 after this, you'll understand why. But yeah, Gundam Movie 2, Soldiers of Sorrow, or Kakura Stone's Island are honestly really good places to start with in the original Gundam if you want to start it at all. So yeah, let's talk about Soldiers of Sorrow a sec. After the first Gundam movie did well enough at the box office, this one did even better and this one actually is cleaned up a lot. It has significant edits to the pacing and the flow of the story, and because of those edits, this one flows efficiently like a movie's supposed to flow. So it does have a beginning and middle and an end because they re-edited it and they added new scenes to make the random TV episodes flow in a movie format. It has really good action, it has really good pace, and it covers all the events of the white Base crew on Earth until like the Battle of Jabiro. Anyway, then we go straight into Gundam Movie 3 and Cowards in Space. That should definitely be the next thing you watch after you watch Gundam Movie 2. Encounters in Space is 30% different from the TV episodes they adapt. It takes out a lot of the ridiculous standalone episodes where Amor just like fights a stupid giant mobile armor. And it really boils down the later part of the show to the core political drama, the end of the war, and the major character conflicts between Shar, Amor, Sela, and Lala. Like... If you really, really want to rewatch the original Gundam anime, if I was told today I had to rewatch it, I would probably only rewatch Gundam Movie 2 and Gundam Movie 3. And then after the Movie 3, you can watch some more of the standalone episodes from the TV show because there's some interesting little factoid episodes like, oh hey, did you know Amuro fought a Zaccarello and it was just like a spaceship with like claws on it? Or, oh hey, there was an episode where the white base ran out of salt. These episodes are a lot easier to swallow if you just watch them on their own after the movie and after seeing the better movie version of the events i think it makes you more able to appreciate the janked up pacing of the tv versions now i'm going to bring up the gun and the origin ovas now i've heard some people say watch these first i completely disagree with that they've only been made in the past decade and the gundam origin ovas have intense prequel syndrome where they omit a lot of the story and they're mostly designed to fill in Char Aznable's backstory of what he did in the years before the original Gundam series. Now, I think because they're missing so much information, if you watch these first, they might be a little confusing. I think you'd get it if you did watch them first. But really, these movies mostly exist for people who want to know more about Char and the political drama with the Zabi family. They're a really great watch after you've watched Gundam Movie 3. 
and if you want more of that world. But these OVAs don't really have that 70s anime flavor that you're going after because these OVAs are more modern. They have a little bit more of the feel of like a modern HBO drama like Game of Thrones or Secession. Anyway, they're entertaining, but they're just not the same as 70s Gundam. Alright, I hope that answers most of your questions about 70s Gundam. And once you've finished watching 70s Gundam and you have a base understanding of the Winter War, you can probably better watch a lot of the One Year War spin-off series like Away From S Team, MS Igloo, Thunderbolt, or any of the video game spin-offs set deeply in the other parts of the One Year War. I strongly recommend Blue Destiny because it comes up so much, or Gundam 0081 which was on PS3. Anyway, if you don't want to go into spin-offs after you finish some version of the original Gundam, I immediately recommend you go into Zeta Gundam. And with Zeta Gundam, everything I just said about the original Gundam is reversed. So. Zeta Gundam, like the original Gundam, has three compilation movies, but unlike the original Gundam compilation movies which were made right after the show came out, Zeta Gundam came out in 1985, and the Zeta Gundam compilation movies, the retranslation, came out in 2005, 20 years later. Now, there's some definite good things about the new translation movies. They have a few new jokes, and a lot of the fights were redone to be stunning and shocking and modern. They also added some more connective tissue to Gundam WRE 3, but the fact of the matter is, because these movies were made 20 years later, because Yoshiyuki Tamino's headspace was in a completely different space, there's some major issues with the Z Gundam movies, because they just don't take the story in the same direction. Long story short, the Zeta Gundam movies are not canon, because Double Zeta, Narrative, and Unicorn all reference events specific to the Zeta Gundam TV show, that do not happen in the movies, so if you watch the Zeta Gundam movies, you're going to be confused. I recommend you only watch the Zeta Gundam TV show and watch the movies if you just feel like doing it. In short, the movies are cool but not canon, and I strongly recommend no one ever watch them without having seen the series first. Now, after Zeta comes Double Zeta. Now, Double Zeta is a bit of a clown show, and I would strongly recommend you watch Double Zeta before Unicorn, because Unicorn is a stealth Double Zeta sequel. Also, if Moon Gundam ever gets animated, Moon Gundam is a direct Double Zeta sequel, and follows up both plotlines from Zeta and Double Zeta. Now, moving on is CCA. You can watch CCA without watching Double Zeta, but you really should watch CCA after you've watched Zeta. Technically, you could watch CCA right after you've watched the original Gundam without losing out on too much, but the ideal way to watch CCA is either directly after Zeta or Double Zeta because it has minor callbacks to what Shar and Amuro did in Zeta. After that, you can watch F91 and Victory Gundam. Both of them basically stand on their own. Victory is basically the end of the UC timeline, and it does have some extremely light connections to F91 and CCA, but you really won't miss out on anything if you just watch Victory by itself. You can also technically watch Gundam Hathaway right after CCA, because Hathaway is a direct sequel to the events of CCA. Unicorn also fits right between CCA and Hathaway's Flash. I don't know right now if Hathaway is going to tie into Unicorn, but Unicorn is also a direct sequel to CCA. Oh, and also, finally after you watch CCA, you should be able to watch the original 80s SC Gundam and get all the insane deep cut jokes in it because they reference shit from the original Zeta, Double Zeta, and CCA. But anyway, long story short, watch Double Zeta before you watch Unicorn. And then if you love CCA, if you love Zeta, and you love Unicorn, you can watch Gundam Narrative and fully understand it, soak it up, and fully love it for what it is. Moving on to some of the alternate universes, the first alternate universe is G Gundam. G Gundam is probably the most standalone Gundam series, and that you guys can just watch anytime you want. It's extremely accessible. After that is Gundam X. Gundam X is okay. It's a post-apocalyptic standalone Gundam series. You can definitely watch it on its own, but it's also designed to do some callbacks to the original and Zeta. And lastly, Gundam Seed also exists. Now, my big issue with Gundam Seed is that Seed is okay if you're watching it in a vacuum, but if you've seen a lot of the original Gundam series, Seed steals a ton of content and a ton of story beats from the original Gundam. So if you've watched the original Gundam before Seed, you're probably not going to like Seed as much. Seed has some compilation movies too. The movies are better than the TV show, I think. And I don't really like the Seed compilation movies except for the last one because that's when Rama Food Set does all the entertaining stupid shit. After that comes Seed Destiny. Seed Destiny, in my opinion, is funnier and more interesting than Seed. 
And after that is Steed Stargazer, which I think is the best Seed-related piece of content in existence, and it's the best Seed-related movie in existence. They are making another Seed movie in the future, but right now Seed Stargazer is great. Stargazer technically has some light connections to the other Gundam Seed series, but I would also say it's probably one of the most standalone Gundam movies as well. After that, in 2009, Gundam 00 comes out. Now, Gundam 00 was designed to be its own thing, but personally, I think Gundam 00 is better if you watch it right after Gundam Wing because it's designed to be a post-9-11 remake of Gundam Wing. And the second season of 00 just is not as good as the first. It also has a finale movie, Awakening of the Trailblazer, which wraps up all its loose end. Then the next Gundam series is IBO, Iron Blood Orphans. IBO is probably one of the most absolutely standalone series. Aside from some minor links in the structure to CCA and the original Gundam and Wing, IBO pretty much is its own thing and you can enjoy IBO as it is. And lastly, the most recent Gundam series is Witch for Mercury. Witch for Mercury just finished airing and that series also stands on its own, but it also has a lot of deep cut references to the original Gundam, Zeta, G Gundam, and oddly enough, Revolutionary Girl Utena, which it rips off like wholeheartedly. And fuck it, if you watched the original Gundam, CCA, Wing, 0083, and G Gundam, you can appreciate SD Gundam Force. Now I know this is a baby show and I know no one talks about it, but it actually has some pretty good jokes that you will appreciate if you watch the original CCA Wing 0083 and G Gundam. And so that brings us to the final category in this video. And the final category is Gundam series that only makes sense if you've seen every single Gundam series. Now the most important Gundam series in this category is Turn A Gundam. Turn A Gundam is the most nuts Gundam series ever made. It's steampunk, it's future punk, Turn A stands alone, and I would say Turn A is one of the greatest, most beautiful Gundam series, hell, one of the most beautiful animes ever made. Although Turn A stands on its own, Turn A has strong connections to G, Wing, the original Zeta, and Double Zeta, and you should really watch all of those series before it to really enjoy it, because Turn A is designed to be the last Gundam story. Like, Turn A was written to, like, just be the end of Gundam, and it feels that way, especially if you watch it as the last Gundam series you watch. Now, after Turn A, you can also consider watching Gino Reconquista. Gino Reconquista, so far, is a TV show and a movie remake. The movie remake is, so far, a completely different story. The TV series is funny, but a little bit broken. The movies, so far, I've only seen the first two movies. And the movies so far are seeming to make a lot more sense. Also, G. Reco is somehow connected to Turn A's timeline, but there's an ongoing internet argument right now if G. Reco is either a sequel to Turn A or a prequel because of the way the world was fucked up in Turn A. I still myself prefer Turn A to stand alone as the last Gundam series in the way that Batman the Killing Joke is written to be the last Batman story, even though there have been like 40 years of Batman stories since that one. It's just one of those ones that you read it and then like you feel like it's over. And so yeah, beyond that there's also the Build Gunpla spin-off animes. All of these shows are fun. They mostly just stand alone on the concept that building a Gunpla is fun and they have loose continuity with each other. But these shows are also super densely packed with insanely deep cut jokes to every single previous Gundam series. My personal favorite of these is Build Divers Try because I think it's the funnest and most realist Build Divers series. It's just bound, it's just got a really down to earth vibe of a bunch of nerds hanging out trying to beat a video game together, and it's really, really wholesome. I also think the most recent series, Build Divers Rerise, was also pretty cool and pretty insane for somehow bringing in alien dog people. Anyway, so I hope that answers your question, and here's a really confusing chart of everything I just said drawn on a whiteboard. So yeah, based on this chart, the best options for getting into Gundam are 0080, Gundam Movie 2, or Doan's Island, G Gundam, Gundam Wing, IBO, or Seed if you really need to watch it. Despite that though, this is just a chart of where you should start and not a chart of which series are the most important. If I had to pick only three Gundam series to watch, I'd say the most important three are the original, TV Zeta and then CCA, or fuck it if you don't like those, G Gundam Wing and Turn A. 
Anyway, good luck watching all the Gundam series. It takes a long while. Let me know where you started watching Gundam. Maybe it was one of these. I mean, it had to be one of these, right? Alright, later I'm making YouTube videos again. For now.